in this lecture we'll be focusing on the uh, minimum wages act in the previous class we talked about the building and other construction workers act 1996 it is one of the important act uh, for uh, construction workers and uh, this act is pretty generic it's not only for construction workers but also for any uh, you know organized or unorganized sector just to fix up the uh, minimum wage uh, or nominal wage generally they refer to right for their uh, particular task or work right so that is what we call a minimum wages act it's a very old act probably it is established in 1948 and this this act is still in existence and in fact uh, this is a pretty much important for uh, semi skilled laborers and unskilled laborers because the rate fixation or the amount of the salary fixed for them for their particular job is kind of a pretty uncertain to have a perfect guidelines uh, this particular act was uh, you know uh, probably used or appreciated but let's get started and whenever i uh, we look into an act like three things we need to uh, certainly look into the year in which it was established and then it is the coverage of the act like whether it is applicable to the whole of india or except jammu and kashmir or only in a specific region or regional uh, or you know um, zonal perspective all these things you need to uh, really look into and the third is this uh, whether this act is an abolishment of certain ill practice or it is just an enhancement of the uh, or providing welfare measure to the uh, benefit or people at the benefit uh, receiving it from it right so that's the three important thing and this is uh, a pretty much an important act for providing welfare or you can even say uh, benefit to the uh, unorganized uh, workers they don't belong to a particular uh, company or industry or many of them are not even permanent laborers or permanent employees right so they uh, don't have a specified uh, you know uh, enrollment in the company right so in those case uh, this particular uh, act will be in place right? say example a daily labor and uh, the uh, cost or the uh, salary or wage fixed per day for a employee based on a skill and experience will be uh, you know controlled by this act right? so he should be given a minimum uh, there isn't anything called maximum but the minimum should be given like that's the uh, importance of this particular act right and uh, this is uh, no the central government has given direction uh, which means with this act to the state government and if they uh, can add extra schedule or some particular work will not be there in a generic perspective but only in a specific location so in that case um, the state government can uh, add them in the schedule and then give appropriate direction by some way um, one uh, typical example is um, there is a musical instrument called uh, Nathaswaram. Uh, that's a South Indian uh, musical instrument used for um, uh, generally uh, in temples or in devotional purposes or devotional music. But then it is used for uh, a South Indian wedding and all right. So there's only one uh, place or one um, prominent location uh, that gets manufactured. So that's not manufactured throughout our country, but there's one place called Tanjavur, uh, in or you can call Tanjur in English. So um, in that place only it gets uh, you know uh, manufactured. Like only very few people uh, does that uh, from their uh, ancestors, only for a quite a long time, and from there only it gets uh, manufactured and exports to different countries also by a uh, different mu musical academy or musical agencies or even mu music shops also right musical instrument shops right so but now uh, you know that particular tradition is getting changed and most of the people who are supposed to do that and moving out to the other jobs because of its, uh, you know lesser demand or something like that right so that case is like uh, in that case uh, the minimum wage for of that uh, should be given or you know to be uh, provided in the gazette right so that's how it is regional perspective rather than a whole country's perspective but other than that like uh, the uh, construction workers or probably 
construction labors or omnipresent like they are in every states in every uh, countries also so in our country in order to regulate them uh, they have to be given a fixed wage or a minimum wage right and then the minimum wage when i talk about minimum wage a uh, mason a head mason uh, probably in a metropolitan cities like chennai uh, can receive one huge uh, money or sum uh, or wage uh, when compared to the uh, mason head mason in a rural region the reason is that the cost of the living in chennai is pretty heavy uh, or in any metropolitan cities in india is pretty high so if they, if they are given the same uh, rate as the uh, uh, labor in the uh, rural region then it is not viable so in that case the minimum wage of the metropolitan will be little different right so that's the basic cost right so let's get into the act uh, before we get into the actual definitions of this particular act we need to uh, demarcate the age group right so age less than 14 is child labor so it should be completely eradicated or completely abolished child labors cannot be entertained at any point like be it one hour job or even 30 seconds job inclusive of child labor will be detrimental to not only the society but also to our country as a whole right so child labors are abolished should be eradicated right but then uh, who are called child is uh, anyone would have their age less than 14 and 14 to 18 are called adolescent uh, age and eight, more than 18 is called adult right so remember in the previous uh, lecture in building and other construction workers had we talked about the uh, carrying capacity or the minimum or the maximum load uh, the person can take it's categorized based on the uh, age like adolescent can carry adolescent male can carry 30 kg maximum whereas adult male can take 50 uh, kg and adult a uh, female can take maximum of 30 kg and adolescent uh, female can only take up less than the adult uh, female right so this is something like uh, the definitions we have done in building and other construction workers act right so understand this demarcation then uh, the definition or employee um, as i told you in the previous class uh, that holds good also if you are employed in any of one day in a, a 12 month cycle which means a year cycle then you're entitled to call you as an employee for the particular task or a particular company uh, not a permanent employee just an employee you have worked for them right something like that. or to do skilled or unskilled work like outsourcing like sometimes uh, the machinery components gets hired or gets uh, you know outsourced and those people also skilled or unskilled those people also call employee and people who does only temporary job or manual or clerical job uh, say for example uh, clearing the debris you might require some unskilled laborers only to clear off the debris in the construction site then uh, probably those people also call as employee and then the regular job workers who are the uh, permanent employees employees anyone uh, who gives job to the particular person or the employee it could be a uh, uh, individual uh, uh, construction of a compound wall in an apartment or that's a society uh, but even an individual house if you ask an electrician to fix up the uh, worn out uh, electrical wires and that's basically the individual employer but in a company uh, if you run a business uh, even uh, mediocre level to a very high level then the people who work in the uh, you know organization are controlled by uh, management that is called employer so all these things can be an employer in a government uh, scenario the particular appropriate government be it a state government or central government uh, or even uh, the local authority like panchayat or something like that those people also deemed to be called as at the employer And uh, before we get into the uh, scheduled employment, uh, let's take a look at the um, another act called Payment of Wages Act. Right. So in this case, we talk about in this Minimum Wages Act, we'll be looking into the uh, minimum wage that should be provided. In Payment of Wages Act, we will be looking into whether the uh, employer 
pays the money to the employee. So that's the uh, different thing, but you should know uh, payment of wages tax also. Then scheduled employment is any employment specified. I mean, this part one is a certain type of industries and working with an agriculture, horticulture, something like that, right? So those people are called scheduled employment, which means they have they are like uh, subjected to provide minimum wages. Like for example, illegal activities cannot be uh, paid, right? So those things does not comes under the um, you know min minimum wages act, right? So the work should be legal. And it should be uh, specific to some industry. Um, say, for example, uh, but minimum wages act is there in uh, every uh, businesses or every uh, work uh, an employee does. But say, for example, uh, the uh, uh, say if you hire an employee, I mean, a person for cleaning your car. So basically, that is uh, predominantly, uh, you know, uh, pretty much an arduous and uh, complex task. Uh, generally, they, the car cleaner will generally uh, demand, like for example, we will do that for three days in a week and then uh, charge of 500 rupees or something like that, right? So it was, if another person, uh, you know, um, quotes like uh, 600 rupees and I just do it for four days a week and 600 per month, right? So that's kind of a different differential thing. but. There you cannot claim for minimum wages or something like that. So you just there isn't any fixed value. So that's an individual perspective. Or sometimes when a person is really good, very skilled, even though he demands 600 rupees per month and he does only three days per week, then then uh, even though it's it's higher, you cannot demand for minimum of wages. He may not turn up to ask him to come for 500. The other guy is doing for 500 or something like that. So that's something like that's individual perspective, which will not be falls under a minimum wages act. So this is um, uh, some of the uh, you know uh, examples, like uh, which are comes under um, minimum wages act plus employment in any woolen carpet making or shawl weaving establishment. Uh, basically, it is the uh, you know the textile industry kind of thing or uh, hand weaving or hand loom industries then in rice mill flour mill or even dal mill and then uh, employment any tobacco including bid making manufacturing something like that. then uh, any plantation um, uh, something like uh, vegetation or rubber tea estate or something like that or employment in any oil mill all mills uh, specifically comes under this particular act then employment under any local authority and construction and maintenance of roads. This is very important for us. Then stone uh, crushing. This is uh, pretty much the crusher industry and uh, lathe machine or lac machine manufacturing or mica works or just like pasting the uh, you know um, stone work or any other works. Then public motor transport. This is very important. Uh, normally. Um, uh, sometimes an acting driver, they call acting driver, and they have a support mechanism in common. So whenever a person like high officials, the driver takes a uh, vacation or leave, then the acting driver comes into picture. And that is true for trans public transport also. So acting drivers, like they're not actually full-fledged drivers, but then they know driving and they have a license, but they are, will be standby during emergency. Say for example, festival season. Uh, normally in festival season there will be a lot of uh, transportation. Uh, people move to their native places. So in that case, uh, they'll have an acting driver so support mechanism. Then tannery and leather manufacturers and gypsum mines, ice mines like oxide mines, magnesium mines, all this uh, mineral ore mines. Then even maintenance of buildings and employment in construction and maintenance of railways. Then China clay is pretty much a metal kaolin. Uh, then Kenite and copper mines. So all those mines are uh, uh, is also considered. But then, like there are some act like Mines Act 1952, which we have seen in the previous case also, Factories Act 1948 and Mines Act 1952. So those also, uh, you know, uh, will be a crucial part for people working in mine industries. All the thing like uh, stone mines in uh, asbestos and fire clay, chromite mines and so on. 
and these are the uh, other mines like silica mines, graphite mines, and so on, right? And then part two is about uh, agriculture cultivation, and India is an agrarian country, right? So our uh, prime, uh, you know, job uh, were like uh, agriculture, like most of the uh, people uh, perform agriculture. Uh, if there is no agriculture, it will be a huge uh, upset for our country, but also for the livelihood. The reason is that our population is pretty high, and uh, the if the agriculture is pretty much uh, lesser, then shortage of food occurs or some other ill effects happens. So agriculture is predominantly considered to be a very important task. But then um, horticulture, even like um, plants, growing plants, vegetations, and so on, right? So all those things like anything related to the farming, farm operations, and something like that that will be uh, crucial part and that will be part number two and here we come to a very important thing called definition of wages what do you call a wage or a salary right so wages uh, expressed or implied monetary payment in terms of contract of an em employment and includes house rent allowance so this is very important so wage includes uh, you know the hra which is house rent allowance uh, it is mostly given a monetary cash, uh, right, to the uh, employee for his employment or the work done, right? But wage does not uh, include house element, house accommodation. So that is a different story. They have to take care of that. In other medical facilities and all, right, like in the salary, we have got medical uh, provisions like insurance and all, but that will not be here. And the pension fund, provident fund and all will not be, uh, uh, done uh, under wage scheme. So wages is just like uh, uh, typically the money you give it to a person for his employment. But salary is different. So salary includes all the other medical aspects like pension fund, provident fund, and so on. And even traveling allowance are given for a salaried employee, but not for the wages. And gratuity or payable, right? So wage includes gratuity, uh, but not. Uh, I think it's not included in wage, but it's only included in the salary. And the appropriate uh, government, but one important thing that you should know is the competent authority, right? So what is competent authority is one who takes care when there is a violation or when there is a report on a particular uh, misuse of this act, right? So the authority that is responsible to take care of this is called competent authority. A very important term that you should know uh, in any act even in a previous act we talked about building another construction work act we talk about competing authority or the committee advisory committee right so the different uh, agencies government agencies and private agencies or even quasi government agencies who is responsible for uh, you know not only uh, looking into the violation but also to um, regulate whether this is uh, you know, uh, happening or this particular act is uh, going smoothly without really misconduct or misuse. So, yeah. And um, there are other things like you should know, like a minimum time rate, which is, you remember the types of contract we discussed, one is called time contract. So that is based on the time, hourly basis, they're paid for their work time. Say, for example, uh, this is pretty much, um, you know, the uh, temporary or freelance workers. If you want to uh, have a have your photograph um, or if you want to have your portrait diagram, portrait drawing, you just, um, you know, um, hire an artist and then he just not ask for uh, a work package, but instead he say per hour, I'll charge you this much money. Right, so graphic designers, pretty much a good example. So they work for the time rather than the uh, package or the uh, product outcome, right? So that case, you have to provide minimum time rate, right? So if an artist asks for 500 rupees per hour, whereas the particular job can only be given a maximum of 50 or 60 rupees per hour, then that is very high. You can even tell them like the minimum wage is this, so we can roughly fix around 100 rupees to 120 rupees, but 500 is pretty heavy, pretty high. So in that case, you can negotiate with them or something like that, right? Then minimum fees or unit rate. So this is the wholesale price. So 
if you order um, this is example we can say is uh, crackers in diwali uh, the agency will just uh, order the uh, fireworks factory to manufacture this quantum of piece for that piece i will give a minimum wage for the particular product done or the crackers done something like that right then guaranteed uh, time right this is just in, uh, piece why a piece work but also i've got a guaranteed wage like it's not only on piece but also for the time it is based on right so that's say for example if one one hour if they could make uh, some 50 crackers uh, in a minimum piece we will be looking into 100 crackers is minimum so we pay that but in this case you also say that 100 crackers within 2 hours right so that's kind of a guaranteed time or something like that then overtime right if they work extra generally it gets compensated high generally they say twice the original salary or the regular salary so if a employer a employee um, gets 500 rupees a day if he works at least 4 uh, hours extra um he will be not given like four hours package but he will be given a twice the four hours of the regular time as simple as that which means that 250 rupees uh, is the um, half a day salary say for example for him eight hours half that is four hours he works extra time four hours in the uh, evening after his regular employment so he will not be given 250 but instead he will be given 250 into two which is 500 which is the regular day salary right so as simple as that so you should remember that overtime rate and all then a minimum fixing of minimum wages uh, will be by government uh, right so it will be depending upon the uh, location and then it depends upon the cost of uh, living in that particular region which is pretty much referred to as cost index probably you you'll be studying that in estimation and costing uh, estimation and quantity serving i guess as a course so you you'll be uh, taught on costing and also uh, some basic estimation strategies so that uh, will be very useful for fixing up the minimum rate of wage of like that right and then it is also fixed under uh, hourly basis or daily or weekly or monthly or sometimes fortnight like which is 15 days so sometimes they get in fortnight also 15 days of salary something like that right and then uh, we talk about uh, government uh, government has a huge uh, responsibility in fact the competent authority which is what we talk about the appropriate board which maintains or regulates this particular act and uh, particular industry or across the uh, region so those will be very much uh, you know the appropriate government to establish the minimum rate and this gets very uh, time perspective right so you cannot define that say for example in 2002 if a person gets 200 rupee a day a uh, head mason that cannot be given in 2022 right so the amount the inflation got higher and uh, the time value of money got higher you cannot pay him the same salary so the cost of living of the place got higher and so on so you cannot generally i uh, know uh, have fix it for throughout uh, in a particular period or something like that so it gets revised yearly generally it is revised yearly and all those thing will be by the competing authority or uh, organizing committee or something like that right so some of the uh, minimum wage uh, calculation is there are three or four uh, methods one is like the basic rate of wage plus special allowance which is called as cost of living allowance so that's a method one right so if you are an employee employer uh, you will be giving uh, the uh, wages in based on the three term any of the three term right uh, if you like so first is the basic rate uh, say for example 500 rupees a day plus special allowance the cost of living allowance say for example if it is an urban region you can give it a little higher like some 75 to 100 rupees then if it is a rural region you can give them with uh, 25 or you can even uh, don't give them special allowance because the rural region the cost of living is pretty uh, nominal right so basic wage itself is sufficient for that then uh, that's what method 2 without any cost of living allowance then method 3 is consolidated pay without splitting into basic something like a lump sum we don't uh, specify as like uh, basic is 500 and plus extra 
but instead you can give them asad like just 600 is a lump sum so that's a method number 3 and uh, the value of supply of essential commodity uh, plus the va values or beneficial measure to a particular thing uh, for example uh, for a um, beauty uh, ward boys in the uh, covid uh, 19 uh, wards uh, or center uh, they were given a um, ppe which is the personal protection uh, equipment as well as their their lives are in, uh, insured now like right? so most of them who even uh, provides uh, you know refreshment to the covid patients they were given both ppe and then their insurance because their life is at risk and their job is really commendable right so they are risking their life to serve humanity right so in that case they will be given some value benefit also or if they happen to uh, lose their life because of the duty then their job will be uh, given to their wards if they are eligible right something like some benefits no so those also are pretty much important and moreover that the people who give refreshments are not a regular uh, employment they are like contract employees so the duty staff and duty nurses are their permanent employee so if they do task it's it's kind of a pretty much a part of their duty in addition to their service but the ward boys uh, probably the refreshment providers or like probably contractors or contract laborers uh, contract not contract laborers like con labor under uh, you know some contract with an organization right something like that so those things uh, value some benefit should be given right some security personals uh, their life should be insured because they are in the hazardous uh, work place and something like that right so those things uh, are pretty much important and uh, all these committees and subcommittees are probably the competent authority or appropriate authority meet every year and then they look into the uh, revising or fixing the minimum wages so if there's a new job coming up like the freelancing jobs not that not regularized earlier but now Uh, minimum wage, uh, whereas the existing uh, jobs, uh, they'll uh, they'll be revising the minimum wage. Advisory boards and committee, all, all those things are just uh, the nominal work hour. As I told you, it is eight day, uh, eight hours um, per day, or forty eight hours per week. So that's the nominal thing. and this we have seen earlier also if they work extra they will be given an overtime charges also and they should be given a holiday and then they should be given a interval to rest and so on right so exception to normal working uh, hours is like where persons are employed to meet emergency like we cannot deny if you have emergency or natural calamities or natural factors and of course medical issues and technical issues and some like that right so there will be given some exceptions also but it should not be prolonged duration otherwise it will be detrimental to the organization and the productivity gets diminished and over time as i told you it's generally the twice but generally people given 1.5 factors and um, people um, who wants to have other benefits like uh, salary advancement and all and one such case is like uh, every employee is entitled to receive full salary but if they are willing to work only some portion or his unwillingness then he does not receive a full salary but if he does not turn up uh, meticulously uh, then that particular day his work which is which is not done will be uh, penalized or compensated in a salary so that's also a provision then uh, if a person works for two or more classes like for example if one does uh, mason work as well as uh, the uh, blacksmith work then he will be given appropriately uh, he will be paid based on the minimum wages of two or more works something 
then time ranges and piece works and the records this is very important so register of fines a uh, deduction of damages if in case a person produces uh, defective items in piece wise you will be eliminating that piece and you pay the rest of the package but if it does for time uh, within a time frame so hourly wage then you should really look into the output also doesn't mean that it takes longer time to complete the smaller job or something and master role you should have uh, a master role is the uh, attendance sheet something like that for an employee so you should probably maintain uh, every year or something then inspection like competent authority the appropriate government organization does inspection and checks and verifies whether everything goes fine in most of the organizations and claims if they happen to you know um, miss out or don't provide minimum wages act if um, an inspector or the competing authority finds out then the company will be sued fined and that fine amount will be used for compensating the loss generally uh, the claims are pretty uh, expensive so normally companies do not want to uh, be in that situation they provide the minimum wage and this is a procedure you can probably look into that uh, whenever this offenses who violates it uh, in fact this is a very old uh, fine rupees is probably uh, few years before but now the value would be changed uh, depending upon the current situation and uh, this is generally a um, civil uh, proceeding uh, not directly to the court um, the severity is first dealt with the uh, competing authority then if the problem doesn't solves then they go for the court court will be the final stage and exemption is um, there are some cases uh, uh, the payment is not done by the uh, Okay, so then, um, if a person uh, who expired during his tenure, then the employee uh, or the employer pays uh, the employee family, or if the contractor who is responsible for the payment who does pay the uh, person who got injured or right. So that's it for uh, it's a pretty much a classical act. You can take a look at this whenever you're free and can browse through internet regarding the case studies of uh, you know the minimum wages act as well as the building and other construction workers act. Right. So this comes to the uh, end of today's lecture.